this week we will cover these topics the topics for this week are uh, today we will try to discuss about uh, the introduction of oncogenesis what is oncogenesis about oncogenesis we will try to discuss in oncogenesis we have oncogenes and we have tumor suppressor genes about these concepts we will try to discuss in today's class so this week we will discuss about oncogenesis oncogenesis is nothing but it is the pathology of cancer anyways we will discuss about this in detail and the next concept in this week we will be discussing about the etiology etiology means uh, all the causes for cancer all the causes starting from the radiation chemical causes biological causes we have so many hormonal causes drug related causes so many causes are there we'll discuss about the etiology and each factor how they are leading to the cancer that also we'll try to discuss and along with etiology we will also discuss the classification of different cancers classification okay this is very very important in this we'll try to discuss all the basics different names how cancer diseases were named okay different different tissues are having different names so uh, depend on the risk factor depend on the cause and depend on the site of cancer we have classification we'll try to discuss that classification and uh, along after finishing this uh, we'll try to cover the treatment modalities in treatment modal modalities we have different strategies of treatment what strategies we have for different cancer conditions different see in all cancer conditions single treatment strategy is not followed so each each uh, cancer has specific treatment strategy so those treatment strategies and modalities will try to understand and along with this we will also try to diagnose the cancer okay diagnosis of cancer we'll try to discuss how a cancer is diagnosed how cancer is screened and different ways of uh, diagnostic criteria and different diagnostic parameters different diagnostic tests machineries whatever uh, available in current uh, market all these things we'll try to discuss and after that we will also uh, discuss about the pharmacology very very important in pharmacology we will try to discuss all anti neoplastic drugs anti neoplastic drugs all these anti neoplastic drugs their pharmacology starting from the drug name classification their mechanism of action their adverse effects their drug interactions all the things see a few students are from second year few are from first year also there uh, i'll be dealing from basic things if you know the concepts please don't think that sir itne basic mein kyun padha rahe okay so from basics we will go if you are strong in your basics definitely you will be master in the subject so i think this pharmacology will take 3 uh, to 4 days uh, this will try to finish once pharmacology is completed just once pharmacology is done 70% of cancer is completed in chemotherapy pharmacology is very very important okay and once pharmacology is done we will go with uh, uh, case discussions okay in hospital case discussions we'll see and uh, along with this few assignments i'll give and at the end of all these sessions this is for one week ma this is for this week only once these concepts were done we'll go back to the specific cancer conditions we'll start with the breast cancer we'll start with bone cancer or lung cancer like that and we'll discuss for this week now let's try to uh, uh, begin our uh, session for today see before starting my session i would like to tell you one thing uh i have some references so many references i refer martindale i think you might be knowing martindale textbook okay this is the standard book for pharmacology and for drug reference agar aapke paas if you are a clinical pharmacist or if you are a good medical professional if you are working in the hospitals you need to refer the drug information always you should have soft copy of this martindale martindale is top in pharmacology and in drug reference in drug reference martindale soft copy textbook is the first place i will try to share this soft copy in the group and along with this i also try to uh, refer goodman gilman okay goodman and gilman from this textbook i have collected certain information and i usually prefer for pharmacology cadzen cadzen clinical pharmacology okay and along with this uh, uh, for basic pharmacology to understand there is one book called shanbag shanbag textbook okay shanbag for medical student this is very very easy very and it, see this is very simple textbook shanbag textbook for pharmacology 
I will try to share you all these textbooks. If you don't have, you can ask me. You can ping me in the WhatsApp personally. I will share all these textbooks. And finally, uh, I also refer uh, DPRO, my most favorite. DPRO, pharmacological or pathological pharmacotherapy. So this is my favorite book. I refer this textbook. And for uh, discussing the cases, I also refer Roger Varger. So these are different textbooks I refer and I collect information from all these different sources and I'm, I will try to provide you and I will try to explain in very easy manner so that you will understand and this information will be useful for you to evaluate all prescriptions cases in the hospital and to judge the different conditions in hospital. See, I'm telling everything from my side. I'm very transparent. I'm very close to everybody. I'm very friendly. See, we are trying to grow together. I don't tell you I know everything. I am not master in everything. Gradually, every day I learn. Every day I learn. It's been five years in my academic field. Every day I study pharmacology. Every day I study DPRO. Every day I refer cases. I have uh, five to six WhatsApp groups in that I keep posting different cases every day. Okay. So, see, in this field, if you want to survive, you have to keep updating your knowledge. Ek din textbook padaliya. Once you completed reading textbook, became doctor, that's not enough. Every day you should keep updating your skills. Let's begin the session. See, one very important point everybody should remember. First of all, if you are doing anything or if you are learning something, if you are learning something, if you are doing a course or if you are doing some activity, with from this activity, today or tomorrow or in future, what will be the outcome? What is the outcome? Unless you know the outcome, you should not do any of the activity. Without knowing the outcome or without knowing the, uh, I mean, without setting your goal or without setting your objective, without knowing the outcome, you should never do anything. If you don't know the outcome of that activity, if you are not having goals of that activity or if you are not having any objective of that activity, if you are doing such activity, that means you are wasting time or you are wasting money or you are wasting your life. It's a basic thing. So we are doing this course, right? This course is for 30 days, right? In this 30 days course, after finishing this course or after learning all the chemotherapy and antineoplastic drugs and all, what is the outcome? What are you going to get out of this course? See, for a clinical pharmacist especially or for a good doctor or for a good healthcare professional, it is very, very important to understand the pharmacokinetic information the pharmacodynamic information and pharmacogenetic information. If you are not aware of these pharmacokinetic data, pharmacodynamic data and pharmacogenetic data, you can't optimize the therapy. Hospital major treatment there is just what you will see the prescription and you will not you will not alter anything. Patient is getting adverse effect, patient is dying, patient is suffering, patient is having many lethal consequences, but still you are also continuing the same. Physician a prescription diya tha. Physician has already prescribed something. You are not having pharmacokinetic knowledge, pharmacodynamic knowledge, pharmacogenetic knowledge. Patient is suffering, suffering and suffering. So to optimize the therapy in the hospital, to make the treatment very effective, okay? To optimize, particularly to optimize the treatment, you need to understand the pharmacokinetic knowledge, pharmacodynamic and pharmacogenetic of antineoplastic drugs. Okay. So our main outcome of the course is to understand the pharmacokinetic data, pharmacodynamic data, pharmacogenetic data. And by knowing this data, you will be easily optimizing the therapy in the patient. And to understand all this data, it is very, very important for you to understand the pathology of the disease. Pathology. To understand pathology, you need to know different types of cancers. Okay. That is what our course will be doing. Our course will be understanding different types of diseases, their pathology, different etiologies. And along with that, we will study the pharmacokinetic data, pharmacodynamic and pharmacogenetic data. If this information is very clear, you will easily optimize the treatment. You will easily optimize the patient's treatment. You can limit the adverse effects because most anti-cancer drugs will have a lot of adverse effects. You can decrease the drug interactions because pharmacokinetic and dynamic data is very important. And you can counsel the patient. Single counseling points of drug treatment is very, very important. Some drugs has to be taken in empty stomach. 
some drugs has to be taken along with ascorbic acid like acidic ph some drugs has to be taken along with food compulsory some drugs if they are taken definitely they will cause vomiting there are such drugs or there in chemotherapy so in that cases management of vomiting is very very challenging because most of the chemotherapeutic drugs will cause vomiting so our main outcome is to understand the pharmacokinetic data pharmacodynamic data and pharmacogenetic data this is very very important in fifth year pharmacy we study pharmacogenetics okay in clinical pharmacokinetics and therapeutic drug monitoring we have one subject called pharmacogenetics which plays very very important role in uh, uh, chemotherapy in oncology so we'll try to discuss all this so we have 30 days I will, I will take lecture only for 30 days it will be continued 40 40 till, till every concept is completed i will continue the course okay so our outcome is this if you have any doubt or if you want to ask any queries you can unmute your mic and ask now you see let's understand what is cancer see cancer is nothing but it is a group of diseases it is a group of diseases where it is a group of diseases where patient will have uncontrolled cell division it is a group of diseases it is a group of diseases it is group of diseases characterized by or it is group of diseases where patient will have uncontrolled cell division and these uncontrolled cell division are abnormal cells abnormal cells these abnormal uncontrolled cell division will will cause lump formation in the tissue and this lump formation is simply termed as tumor or it can also be termed as cancer okay so in in basic terms cancer is a group of diseases it is not a single disease cancer is a group of diseases where patient has uncontrolled cell division <coughs> and uncontrolled cell division uncontrolled cells are abnormal cells which will try to form lump here we have benign cells and malignant cells benign cells will present at a localized area they will form a boundary okay and they are not that dangerous and it is very easy for benign tumors to remove by surgeries or by chemotherapy and malignant tumors or malignant cells or those abnormal cells which will try to travel from one place to another and they are very dangerous yes of basic things we already know but anyways we'll discuss all these things in detail one by one everything i'll explain now you understood what is cancer. Cancer is a group of diseases where patient is characterized with uncontrolled cell division, which forms abnormal cells. Clear? Now, what is oncology? What is oncology? Study of cancer or study of uh, its diagnosis, prevention and treatment. Study of diagnosis, prevention and treatment of these cancer cells is called oncology. I think you understood these two terms. See, I'm going very basic because first, second, third students are there. If I directly jump into the advanced topics, they can't understand. That's why I'm dealing with all basic things. Now we understood what is the definition of cancer. What is the definition of oncology? Okay. Now you see. Now let us see some prevalent data. Some uh, which type of cancer is affecting in which country, which is more prevalent, which are most common risk factors. Okay. Some ep epidemiological data we'll try to see. Most common cancer in the world in males is prostate cancer and lung cancer. These are very, very prevalent, prevalent. And in females, the top most prevalent cancer is lung cancer. Sorry, uh, breast cancer. Breast cancer. Okay. So in males, Prostate and lung cancer is most prevalent and morbidity, see, yeah, prevalence hai. and in morbidity and in mortality, lung cancer has more mortality in males and in females, despite of breast cancer, again, lung cancer is having more mortality. I think you all are following me. Most prevalent cancer in males is prostate and lung cancer. Along with this, we have so many other cancers, okay, leukemia, hai, bone cancer, hai, rectal cancer, hai, anal cancer, hai, but there are so many other cancers but most prevalent is prostate and lung and most cancer that kills in males is lung cancer in females also lung cancer is top in killing patients mortality is very high with lung cancer because lung is very important in uh, organ kisi patient may agar jaan jati hai if anybody dies major organ failure will be lungs only lungs and heart mainly lungs okay that's why lung cancer is having more mortality 
and globally if we see the data see uh, americans are having 21 percent of cancer cases and in africa we have 5.8 percent of cases and in uh, australia only one percent 1.5 percent in europe 23 percent and asia itself single asia is having approximately 50 percent of cancer patients so they go china and india both are comprising 50 percent of cancer populations so for for a clinical pharmacist and for a doctor you are you people are going to become a great oncologist no so you have great role in our own countries and see now this is a little bit old data i think 2010 data i think this is see these are estimated new cases and these are mortal cases mortality cases okay these are mortality cases see lung lung cancer is having 31 percent of mortality which is highest and next mortality cases is due to prostate cancer and then colon and rectum cancer pancreas stands for fourth position leukemia fifth and remaining all other cancers are below so topmost cancer that is causing mortality is lung cancer and bronchial cancer because if bronco bronco constriction occurs shortness of breath occurs and patient will has to patient will die and in females also lung cancer is the most prevalent just now i told you and second most uh, cancer that kills in females is breast cancer and then third place for colon and rectum pancreas stands for fourth position and remaining all other cancers in the next stages okay so these are uh, different cancers in terms of mortality and these are new estimated cases in males you see prostate cancer is showing more prevalent and then lung cancer and then colon urinary bladder and lymphoma leukemia and all other cancers were uh, after fifth and sixth stage okay. and in female breast cancer stands on the first in uh, on the top most females prevalent cases are having breast cancer and then lung cancer colon and you can see the data okay so these are some epidemiological data which we have to understand and one thing is clear sabse jada lung cancer se mar rahe hai patients patients are dying due to lung cancer and most prevalent is in males is prostate and in females is breast cancer clear now now what do you know about carcinogenesis this is very very important from here actual class starts can anyone tell me what is carcinogenesis anybody from the class see Carcinogenesis is nothing but it is the process. It is the multi-process. A single process nahi hai. It is a multi-process where normal cell will be converted into abnormal cell or tumor cell or neoplas neoplasm or neoplastic cell. Neoplastic cell. You know what is neoplasm? Okay. Conversion of normal cell to the abnormal cell or tumor cell or neoplastic cell or cancer cell just now we, we discussed okay this conversion is called carcinogenesis and this carcinogenesis mainly occurs due to carcinogen carcinogen so what happens a carcinogen will come to the normal cell it will it will initiate the process and in this carcinogenesis we have four stages that i'll explain now these four stages the normal cell will be converted into neoplastic cell or cancer cell. This process or this conversion is called carcinogenesis. Clear everybody? Now I will explain this carcinogenesis in four different stages one by one. Before that, let us understand what is a carcinogen. What is a carcinogen? A carcinogen is, is a chemical agent or a radiation agent or a biological agent which will initiate or which will mediate carcinogenesis. Are you all following me? Carcinogen, carcinogen, carcinogen is a mediating agent which will cause or which will progress carcinogenesis or which will initiate carcinogenesis. Now, you understood what is carcinogenesis. It is a process of conversion of normal cell to neoplastic cell. See, neoplastic cell is nothing but it is a, it is a new cell, new cell which is having more probability more probability to proliferate proliferate it is called neoplastic cell or neoplasm 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 is nothing but see normal cell ke under three properties we have everybody should listen very very carefully all normal cells will have three properties kya hai number one they regulate cell division they regulate cell division number one number two they can repair DNA 
DNA. They can repair normal cells can repair DNA, and they has one very very important process called apoptosis. Apoptosis. If a normal cell lifespan is finished, if a normal cell's lifespan is done, what happens? This normal cell will go to apoptosis, and slowly the normal cell will progressively it will die. Not suddenly. It will die progressively. That process is called apoptosis. Programmed cell death will be used. Programmed cell death is called apoptosis. So normal cells should possess apoptosis. They should regulate their their cell functions, and they also should regulate or they also should uh, repair their DNA. If normal cell is having these properties, then it is a normal cell. If normal cell is not having these properties, apoptosis nahi hai. They are not regulating its mechanism, its cell functions. It is not repairing its DNA. Then what happens? They will lose their normal regular regular activities, and they will convert into new plasma, new plastic cell. New plastic cells will not have any of this activity. Okay, that's why they are considered as new plastic cells. New plastic cells are uh, morphologically and chemically they are different from normal cell. Okay, and these cells are having more ability to proliferate. Why they are having more ability to proliferate? Because they are not having ability to Uh, repair the dna once dna is dna is uh, uh, mutated agar dna ke andar kuch mutation ho kya the cell should repair itself but here the neoplastic cells can't repair and it will start proliferating and it will produce abnormal cells lot of abnormal cells and it will form a lump or a tumor okay anyways we will try to discuss all this in detail now you understood what is carcinogenesis you understood uh, what is carcinogen carcinogen is the agent which will cause carcinogenesis now you see in carcinogenesis we have four groups dhyan se suno this is very very important and competitive point in carcinogens we have four groups first group of carcinogenic agent is uh, in, in this examples we have tobacco i mean tobacco smoke asbestos and uv radiation these are very very potential carcinogenic agents group 1 agents are very very dangerous and very very potent carcinogenic in four groups number 1 is first group is very potential carcinogenic clear everybody in this example you can include tobacco uh, tobacco smoke asbestos uh, uh, uv radiation okay and few other drugs are also there in this okay drugs are also considered in group 1 and next we have group 2 in group 2 we have group 2a and group 2b okay so group 2a are probably carcinogenic and group 2b are possibly carcinogenic you know the the meaning of probable and possible in group 2a we have probable carcinogenic agents they are having probability of causing cancer the risk hai yahan pe so in the in these examples of this group 2a are uh, glyphosate and certain types of dyes yahan pe all types of dyes will come paints dyes and all okay in that glyphosate is very important uh, uh, agent in 2a and in 2b these are possible they are having possibility these are having probability and these are having possibility okay and here in group 2b we have caffeine and cell phone radiation just imagine those who are having uh, habit habit of taking coffee every day okay saudhan ro caffeine can cause cancer because caffeine is a group 2b agent which has possibility of causing cancer because it is a carcinogen caffeine is a carcinogen caffeine is a carcinogen alcohol is a carcinogen there are some uh, uh, virus particles there are carcinogens there are some bacteria which are carcinogens apan khana khate hai na we have some uh, beetle nuts beetle nuts sapari chop dete the bahut sare gujarat mein ye bahut zyada hai pan sapari pan masala all this suparis they will be chewing that is called beetle nuts even they are also carcinogen so just remember caffeine is under group 2b it can cause cancer because it is a carcinogenic agent and in group 3 group 3 are not actually classified in the carcinogen but they are having less uh, probability okay so in group 3 we have uh, aluminum and electricity and all okay and in group 4 uh, again uh, vitamin d and coffee okay so these four groups you you have to understand just remember this yahan pe i think somewhere i have a uh, see uh, this is a uh, international agency for research on cancer uh, they have classified the uh, carcinogens into four groups in that group 1 group 2a 2b 3 and 
in this uh, just try to remember the names because this is important in competitive if anybody is writing competitive exams like government exams and foreign exams you can remember this okay i think you all are following me okay i think you understood the different uh, four groups of carcinogens carcinogens or the agents which will cause carcinogenesis okay now you see along with along with those carcinogens we have certain drugs hormones and few treatments also in this particularly i have taken this reference from dipro here we have certain drugs and hormones okay in this we have some drugs like chlorambucil uh uh, melphalan, all these are anti neoplastic drugs, okay, cytotoxic drugs. Actually, they are used in cancer, but still they are also having carcinogenic property. We have anabolic steroids, all anabolic steroids like uh, testosterone analogs, even they can also cause cancer. People, without knowing all this, they will be misusing all these drugs. Sometimes analgesics also, analgesics which is containing phenacetin, okay. Phenacetin is the first known compound which is having, uh, which has uh, analgesic and anti inflammatory property. So from these only we generated all NSAIDs, uh, acetyl salicylic acid, aspirin, and all. Anyways, phenacetin. These these is also having carcinogenic property. And anthracyclines. We have uh, anti estrogens like uh, tamoxifen, coal tar. Topical uh, exposure with coal tar can cause cancer. Uh, those who are working in the, uh, I mean, with coal tar, they are high. They are having risk. And estrogens. Uh, in non steroidal estrogens like diethylstilbestol, which is used as a oral contraceptive. Okay, so even these also can cause uh, uh, cancer and some steroidal estrogen substances. Okay, and uh, yeah, immunosuppressive drugs, all these and these specific drugs they are having carcinogen on certain tissues. So these alkylating agents can cause leukemia, anabolic uh, steroids, this can cause uh, cancer in the liver. Okay, all these things you can see about all these drugs and all we'll discuss about. Uh, cancer is in leukemia. We'll discuss about these drugs in detail how they actually cause what is their mechanism in liver cancer. We'll discuss about this anabolic steroid and uh, bladder, urinary bladder cancer, leukemia, all these skin cancer conditions. In this, we'll discuss about their exact mechanism. Okay, just this table is for understanding the different uh, hormones and drugs which will act like carcinogen. Okay, and a few occupational carcinogens we have just now we have discussed like we have certain dyes. So some chemicals uh, which causes cancer like aniline dye, dyes containing aniline, asbestos and benzene, okay, they are highly prevalent, they causes cancer. And see in this aniline causes uh, bladder cancer and benzene will cause leukemia, and asbestos will cause mesothelioma, thelioma, okay. And other carcinogens what we have uh, some uh, uh, radiating agents like ultraviolet rays just now we discussed, they will cause uh, mutations in the DNA and with that they will destroy the uh, tumor uh, protective agents and with that they will induce uh, cancer okay and in biological agents this is very very important in biological agents we have certain uh, viruses and we have bacteria also so in see epstein bar virus this is very important ebv we call it ebv it will cause burkitt lymphoma okay and uh, we have certain other uh, uh, infections like human papilloma virus uh, okay and uh, yeah so these are different biological agents and different uh, uh, chemical agents which will act like carcinogen i think you all are following me different carcinogens we understood okay so yeah. just now i told you see the carcinogenesis is the process where the carcinogenesis is the process where the normal cell will be converted into neoplastic cell, right? In this, we have four stages. In this, we have four stages. First stage of carcinogenesis. First stage of carcinogenesis is initiation phase. And second stage of carcinogenesis is promotion. Promotion will jata. Promotion phase. And third stage of carcinogenesis is conversion. Therm conversion and fourth phase of carcinogenesis is very very important and this is final phase which is called progression last stage of cancer in movies you might have seen patient is having lung cancer and lung cancer is in the last stage fourth stage that is progression phase why progression phase is very dangerous i'll tell you see see in 
in this we have four phases i told you in carcinogenesis first phase is initiation phase in initiation phase what happens you know simple normal cell normal cell in normal cell will be exposed with carcinogen exposure of carcinogen on the normal cell is initiation phase see we we will be working in the field for example if our parents or our relatives anybody if they are working on uh, uh, as a labor and if they are exposed uh, continuously to the ultraviolet rays in this in the hot sun in the summer so they are going into initiation phase initially the carcinogen like ultraviolet rays are continuously exposing to the normal cell initiation phase is not at all dangerous it is not at all dangerous everybody will be having initiation phase we do some workout we go to ex we exposed to different chemical agents we exposed to ultraviolet rays we exposed to virus bacteria okay sometimes we take some fast food items we expose uh, uh, we eat and drink lot of toxins and all which are highly carcinogens sometimes in few conditions we drink a uh, few beverages and everything so initiation phase is not at all dangerous initiation phase is nothing but the exposure of carcinogen to the normal cell and when this carcinogen continuously exposes and this exposure will go to the next phase which is called a promotion everybody should listen carefully promotion phase is the phase where environment 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 will try to promote the normal cell to go to the next level for example for example in initiation phase a patient has exposed to the ultraviolet rays continuously from morning to evening and evening the patient has again came to their house and patient has taken alcohol so this what this environment is promoting environment is promoting for this for this normal cell to go to the next level so that phase is called promotion phase so remember everybody if anybody is facing initial phase then we should not allow our body to promote to the next phase what we should do we should try to avoid the promotion phase if we avoid this promotion phase again the carcinogen whatever carcinogen is when it is initiated exposed the normal cell again goes to the reverse of i mean normal stage reverse ho jayegi if patient is not promoting it to the next level okay so always remember initiation phase is exposing promotion phase is promoting to the next level we should not allow the environment to promote the exposed cell if this promotion occurs what happens the normal cell the normal cell will be converted into neoplastic cell third phase is nothing but conversion of normal cell to neoplastic cell yahan pe cancer ban gaya yahan pe cancer ban gaya this third phase even this is also not dangerous in third phase in conversion phase if anti neoplastic drug is taken or if surgery is surgery is done this cancer cell will be easily removed or it will be killed or it will be ex, uh, 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 we can remove from the body okay so till conversion phase we can save but this converted converted phase again if it reaches to the fourth phase fourth phase is nothing but progression phase in progression phase what happens you know in progression phase the neoplastic cell will have ability to proliferate it will have ability to proliferate from one place to another place or it will have ability to proliferate the single cell into different cells this is called progressive phase progressive phase is always dangerous once progressive phase continues it is very very challenging for a clinical pharmacist or the physician to stop progression progression ko stop kar sakte hai apan ek bar neoplastic cell progression shuru kar diya to usko koi nahi rok sakta till conversion ek cell normal se neoplastic cell ban gaya till there okay till there we can stop but if it normal if neoplastic cell is starting to proliferate if it is going to the progression phase it is very difficult for us to stop i think you understood these four basic steps in ऑंकोजेनेसिस क्लियर एवरीबडी सी आई एम गोइंग वेरी स्लोली आप लोगों को थोड़ा नींद वींद आते रहेगी आई एम सॉरी फॉर दैट चाय वाई इसलिए रेडी रख लेना बाजू में यू हैव टू कीप टी कॉफी विथ यू सॉरी प्रीफर टी ओनली नॉट कॉफी ओके चलो आर यू ऑल फॉलोइंग मी एवरीबडी समझा Anjum, Shaista, Sumaya. These these students are my favorite students. They were from Hyderabad when I was 
uh, the staff in one of the colleges in Hyderabad. They were very, very uh, regular and very humble students. Anyways, thank you, Saisa Sumaya and Anjum. Anyways, chalo. So next, let, let's uh, proceed. Now you see, now we will try to discuss about oncogenes. Okay, this concept is very important. Ma. From here, it is very, very important. Now we will try to see, till now we have discussed carcinogenesis, carcinogenesis and carcinogens, carcinogens. Now you see, we have certain genes which will cause cancer. They are called oncogenes. Oncology, oncology is called oncology. Oncology is nothing but study of cancer. The gene which shows or which has probability to cause cancer are called oncogenes. Actually, we have two types of genes in our body. Already input genes bolte isko. Our body already has two types of genes. In that, first one is oncogene. The gene which has probability to cause cancer. And second one we have tumor, tumor suppressor gene. Yes. See, oncogene causes cancer and tumor suppressor gene tries to stop cancer. So always our body, in our body, what we have all always our body has defense mechanism, you know. Our body has defense mechanism. If patient is having infection, our body will produce antibodies and certain macrophages. Infection could come karne ke liye. to decrease the infection, our body produces antibodies and macrophages. Yes, antibodies will go and inhibit or will stop the antigens and macrophages will show cell mediated immunity and they will kill microorganisms. In the same way, we have certain protective agents like we have lipoproteins. In lipoproteins also we have low density lipoprotein and high density lipoprotein. Low density lipoprotein causes damage to our body and high density lipoprotein protects our body. In that same way, our body itself produces some oxygen species. Uh, oxygen radicals bolte, okay which has probability to kill some cells so to avoid this our body our liver itself produces some antioxidants antioxidants so see wherever our body is having risk of dysfunction wherever our body is having abnormality in those conditions our body itself tries to produce defense mechanism to avoid those uh, dysfunction related causes okay so in that way our uh, body has two types of genes one is oncogene which produces cancer and one is tumor suppressor gene which stops production of cancer see in cancer what happens you know oncogenes proliferate oncogene uh, determination increases in some cases oncogene production jada ho jayega and tumor suppression tumor suppressor activity or tumor suppressor gene activity decreases in this condition, patient will have cancer. Always, other patient may, if patient has oncogene, along with oncogene, tumor suppression gene is also required. Okay. If oncogene is determined, tumor suppressor gene is also should be determined because it should encounter with this cancer causing oncogene. Among these two, if oncogene is high, if tumor suppressor gene is low, patient will have to suffer from cancer. We will try to discuss how oncogene is produced and what are different pathologies and how their mechanism is seen we'll discuss one by one now you see now i will try to explain the formation of oncogene formation of oncogene what is oncogene what is oncogene oncogene the genes yes the genes which will uh, which will cause cancer simple the genes which will cause cancer now you see in our body in every cells we have dna right every cells will be having their normal activity and every cells are having their genes their own genes now you see whenever any cell is having mutation you already know there are some uh, uh, what we can say some chemical agents which will cause mutation and there are so many other agents which can cause mutation for example if a gene has point mutation if a gene has point mutation, what will happen? The normal gene will be converted into, I mean, I, I mean normal gene. We actually the genes are available as protogenes, proto-oncogenes. Proto-oncogenes. They are normal actually. Proto-oncogenes are normal. They are present in the cells in normal phase. 
when this proto oncogene has point mutation this proto oncogene will be converted into oncogene when normal proto oncogene which is having normal activities in the cell if they are mutated due to uh, any other agent then proto oncogene will be converted into oncogene clear now you see this oncogene what it does you know this oncogene will produce abnormal gene product abnormal gene products they understand it is very very important and very easy initially what we have seen proto oncogene got converted into oncogene due to point mutation this oncogene started started producing abnormal gene products these abnormal gene products what they do they will start or they will produce or they will cause cell proliferation they will cause cell proliferation and this cell proliferation is nothing but it is one of the major step in formation of oncogenesis i mean in formation of cancer okay in formation of tumor simple you can say in formation of your cell proliferation is very important right so this is about oncogene now we have tumor suppressor gene tumor suppressor gene what it does tumor suppressor gene will try to decrease or will try to stop the cell proliferation it will stop the cell proliferation and by that the cell proliferation will be decreased and patient's cancer will be stopped so tumor suppressor gene function kya hai tumor suppressor gene is stopping the cell proliferation that's why see in tumor suppressor gene we have one very very important gene which is called rb1 gene there is one in actually in tumor suppressor genes we have so many examples and in onco genes also we have so many examples each gene their names and if these genes are produced what cancers they will cause all these things we will discuss in the next classes okay in tumor suppressor genes also we have so many examples so in that the best the uh, good example is rb1 gene you know rb1 gene and along with rb1 gene we have p53 p53 this is another tumor suppressor gene there is one concept called guardian of guardian of genome this p53 gene is tumor suppressor gene this p53 gene is known as guardian of genome why you know why it is named as guardian of genome very very important point it is named as guardian of genome because you see there is one concept called uh, human genome project sune naam human genome project sune this is very important human genome project i think you might have uh, heard about this human genome project actually ye 1990 mein start hua tha and this this completed in 2003 1990 mein actually it is a international uh, level uh, uh, research in which uh, they studies about genetics they try to uh, study the gene okay they try to map the sequences ek ek gene ke bare mein pura detail information study karke they can they can artificially they can make one human being also with mapping with studying okay so this was this was already studied so human genome project is the international project which started in 1990 and it completed in 2003 everything about gene everything about genetics everything about dna rna dna ke andar how many rnas we have what nucleic acids and all everything they are having information okay so human genome project is one of the very very important projects in the world so they are having every information about genetics okay so see a see due to this human genomic project they found that there is one gene called pf uh, p53 gene this p53 gene is one of the tumor suppressor gene this gene is having very very important actions dhyan se suno just now i was explaining normal cell is having certain activities normal cell ke activities kya hai they regulate cell uh, they have cell regulatory action okay and they have dna they can de repair dna in their own cells and they maintain apoptosis i told these three actions in normal cell in normal cell in normal cell cell has cell cycle regulation they regulate their own cell cycle in normal cell they repair their dna in normal cell they has apoptosis apoptosis all these are normal physiological activities if 
if the normal cell loses any of this activity then it will either die or it will form neoplastic cell okay so to perform this normal activities to perform this normal activities the very important gene which helps in performing this activity is p50 p53 that's why p53 is having all these activities in the cells that's why p53 is considered as guardian of guardian of genome so p53 is the tumor suppressor gene very very important in next classes me aayega this is very important p53 gene is guardian of genome which is a tumor suppressor gene which has all these activities like it will maintain normal cell simple it will it will uh, 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 safeguard the normal cell okay so i think mera gala bhi chale gaya hai we will stop here we will continue uh, the pathophysiology and etiology from the next class pathophysiology etiology will complete in one class and then we'll start with uh, um, pharmacology okay so it was first day and uh, introduction mein bahut time waste ho gaya from next classes we will not waste time we'll continue